Hello there, it's Christy. As you all know, there was an historic polling upset in the United States this week, a result that surprised everyone. Not since the early days of political polls has an election prediction been so wrong. That means there are a lot of people, including me, who are eating humble pie this week. As a political scientist, that really doesn't bother me. To commit to the scientific process means limiting yourself to the best data you can get. Predictions that are close to the results tell you something about your ability to understand what happened in the election. Predictions that are far off indicate that we need to reconsider our theories and understanding of the factors that determined the election. If I had to do it all over again, would I ignore all of the data presented? Of course not. What kind of scientist would I be if I dismissed all of the empirical evidence available to me? Making a prediction based on evidence is what we sophologists, people who predict election outcomes, do. The point of a prediction is that it can be shown to be wrong. And if you aren't prepared to be wrong and learn from it, then you probably shouldn't be doing election forecasting. This is the first of what I think will be several videos in reaction to the U.S. presidential election. In this video, I want to address the polls and what they got wrong and right about the election, why polling is difficult, and some of the reasons why a poll might have a different result than the outcome. Finally, I will look at specific examples of what a few pre-election polls reported and what the final results were. This talk isn't intended to be a complete overview of election polling. That is a very large and even an international issue at this point. You know, in the UK in 2015, the pollsters actually got the overall vote distribution right, but because they predicted a coalition rather than a conservative outright win, they got the results wrong. And the Brexit vote was basically a statistical dead heat in a lot of the polling, but because of the Remain people sort of edging it out in terms of the, the data the pollsters predicted that Remain would win, but then it didn't. Here in the United States, the national polls actually got it right because Clinton won the popular vote. So polls that gave her the victory within, what, a few points of one percentage were accurate. They just didn't reflect the electoral college distribution. There is a trend of polling data not reflecting right-wing preferences, and that's something I'll address a little later on. What this shows is that those of us who study elections are studying a moving target, and that a model that worked to predict the prior election with near pinpoint accuracy might not perform well in the next. It's what makes this field so exciting and frustrating at the same time for me. But getting on to what happened. Of course the polls got the result wrong, but why? It is still early days and there will be much discussion and many regression analyses run in the coming weeks and months by people who do this for a living and study elections. But early indications are that in some areas, the polls performed well. So first, let's look at what the polls got right. In this recent article on Vox, it shows Clinton's projected and actual support in each state. Notice how the states are clustered along the line. This shows that there is very little difference between our predicted and observed values. In other words, the polling was good. It was dead on, very close. Now let's compare this to Trump's predicted and observed vote share. And see how the observed votes are farther away from the line? The distance between the line and each point shows how much error there is for that state. And the fact that the observations are on the left instead of the right indicate that he did better than predicted. Now, we know that the polls didn't so much get the election itself wrong as they got Trump's support wrong. But why might that have been? There are several possible reasons for that, and I'll go over a few relevant points here. And then afterwards, we'll look at the exit polls to see what I think are the main sources of the difference between the election predictions and the election results. Collecting data to predict what people will do is not easy. When we have a full population and you're interested in what people in a country think, you have access to that whole population. But of course, we're really only interested in what voters do. So for a lot of polls before the election, they will use registered voters to screen out people that they know will not turn out. But even being a registered voter doesn't necessarily mean you're actually going to get to the polls. Some people only vote every four years. Some people voted in a one-off election. Some people vote only, you know, in even numbered years. So then you want to look for what are called likely voters. Who from the registered voters are more likely to vote? Researchers must try to predict 
which people are the most likely to vote. So one possible source of error is that your likely voter model might be wrong. The likely voter model is a bit more art than, say, a definite mathematical proof that will always produce great results. Measures such as interest in the election or strength of partisanship might not be as reliable as they used to be in the light of a completely negative election cycle and declining party affiliation and support. Another possible reason why the polls were off is that getting people to respond to pollsters and polling surveys is getting less and less easy. This means that there is some non-random error that might be entering into the data. We've known in surveys for a long time that people who hold views that are socially unacceptable are less likely to give their authentic viewpoint. And one might argue that Trump supporters who thought the polls were being rigged in the election were also less likely to even participate in a survey. So this is another possible source of why Trump's support was underestimated. Finally, people don't always do what they say they're going to do. People can give an honest answer to a pollster saying that they will vote for, say, Clinton despite being a Republican, and then find when they go to the polling booth they can't, act, they can't follow through on that. These are a few reasons why Trump's support might have been underreported, while Clinton's polling numbers were far closer to the actual results. Finally, I want to show a major difference between what people said to the pollsters and what they reported about themselves on Election Day. The top chart has the polling results from early October. As you can see, Trump was only getting between 47 and 51 percent of whites' support. Compare that with Mitt Romney, who beat President Obama among white voters by 17 percentage points, according to one pre-election poll. But on election day, Trump received 58 percent of the white vote, beating Clinton by 21 percent. That shift obviously created a, that, so, that lift that you saw on the correlation chart we looked at earlier. Another important group that I think explains the difference in the polls and the result of the election were GOP voters themselves. The Never Trump movement seemed to have an impact before Election Day. As late as the 23rd of October, many Republicans were resistant, or at least saying they were res resistant, to voting for Trump. And in those numbers, Trump was only getting 80% of the Republican vote, whereas candidates usually get about 90 to 90 plus percent of their own party's vote. By Election Day, self-identified Republicans returned to their party's nominee and he made up that 10 points with GOP voters between late October and Election Day to get 90% of the Republican votes. Finally, the polls were very good predictors of non-white voters. As of mid-October, Clinton was up by 79% with black voters and up 28% with Hispanic voters. The exit poll numbers put her up by 80% with black voters, and she received 36 percentage points more from Hispanic voters than Trump. But some of that difference can be explained by the massive numbers of registrations and attempts to get people to early vote in those communities. There is a lot more I could say about polls and polling, but for now I will leave you with this thought. Please don't dismiss all polling because of this result. Don't listen to people who repeat the mantra, lies, damn lies, and statistics if they can't explain how to calculate a margin of error based on a sample size. There is good and useful information to be gained by looking at the results of well-run polls with a sound methodology. Just read them with caution and realize that a prediction can always be wrong if people change their minds or do something other than what they say they're going to do. With that, all that is left to be said is that I've been Christy, you've been awesome, and I will be talking to you about this election result a lot more very soon. Until next time, bye.